Refill? Yes, please. are in the uh, cider barrel about 10 minutes ago, sir. Good. Can I come with you? No, you wait out here. Yes, sir. startled me. I've been looking for you. Really? Why? Something to drink, Mr. Payton? No, thank you very much, and I don't want to be bothered. Close the place up, will you, please? Well, I can't do that. There you are. Close the place up, I say. It's more money than you'll take in a week. Yes, sir. Yes. As you passed me on the stairs this morning and refused to meet my eyes, I knew something had happened. When did you see him? Last night, after they came home. I thought so. Sounds carry in that old house, especially in the early hours. Did you have your ear glued to the floor, Martin? Or did you plant a chauffeur behind the curtains? Neither. You weren't exactly speaking in discreet tones. We weren't exactly talking about discreet things. Now, why did you follow me here? Surely you have more interesting things in your life than following my progress with Stephen. I thought you might like to clarify our little agreement. Why? On the stairs this morning, there seemed to be something different about you, something softer. What are you getting at, Martin? You're experiencing some feeling for him, aren't you? <laughs> Hardly. What was it you said the other day, that you weren't the sentimental type? Who could be more sentimental than the woman who's known many, many men, but never known love? I knew from the first that you'd respond to Stephen, just as I knew that you were the ideal person to get rid of him. All right. Just for the sake of argument. Supposing you're right, and I do fall in love with Stephen. What if one day we just get up and run away and leave you in that big house and your manipulations and Betty with her small-time ambitions to console each other? You'd be all alone, wouldn't you? with nobody to oppose you and nobody to care about you. You're not afraid of Stephen hurting you. You're afraid of being ignored. A very pretty fantasy, my dear, but pure fantasy. Do you really think you could stop us if we wanted each other badly enough? Stephen's a Puritan. He likes to put his women on pedestals. How do you think he'll feel when he finds out what you really are? That his unattainable beauty was at one time very attainable indeed. No, there's nothing in the cards for you and Stephen. We'll see. With your extensive experience, I should have thought you'd have known more about human nature. Good day, my dear. Martin. I won't be spied on like this, do you understand? If there's anything to tell, I'll come to you. I don't think I could depend on that. There are few sources of information less reliable than a woman in love. back so soon. Well, the only thing that were body were mosquitoes. Uh, Matthew, you little pokey. Mm. Hello, pokey, how are you? Hey, got your note. Well, what are you doing here today? Oh, out with the old and in with the new. What do you have to do it on Sunday? Well, I thought I was working up an appetite for all those fish you were going to catch. Hey, 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 I don't want you looking 40,000 pounds of books like that. Well, be my guest. Sorry, I think I can use the exercise. 
No, I don't think I can. But I think I know somebody who can use the work. Eddie Jacks. Hmm? To work here? Sure. Just till he gets something permanent. Doing what? Oh, you know, the boring kind of stuff, like washing the windows and waxing the floors and, you know, moving books from shelf to shelf. Why? Because he needs a job. Well, why do we have to create one for him? I mean, who elected us? Now, look, honey, you do occasionally wash your windows, and you do wax your floors, and you also move books from shelf to shelf. I have a cleaning service that does the windows and the floors, and I don't need anyone to open a cardboard box for me. You don't need or you don't want anybody, because it's Eddie Jacks. I don't even know the man. I'll introduce you to him, formally. This may look like a seaman's rescue mission to you, but it's really just a bookstore. I see. You mean you're afraid that uh, he'll chase away customers because he's uh, an ex-con? Elliot. You know something? I think you and Dad ought to form a vaudeville team. Carson and Carson. You can do a sort of righteous songs and snappy punishments. You obviously see more to the man than either his wife or his daughter. Now, if he's the misunderstood saint that you say he is, why are they rushing out to help? Are you just more forgiving than they? He wants to make it up to them. Then let him. If he wants a life here, let him make it. You know something, Connie, that sounds pretty good, but somehow I have a feeling it isn't. Sometime or another, everybody needs help. And Eddie Jacks needs help now. I don't want another sparring bout with you, Ron. You remember me? I'm the guy that was going to turn you into the police for giving Jack Chandler that gun. Rita needs your help. Let her ask me for it. Her father's back. So? Wants to see her. The lady's got a husband. Norman has enough to cope with. One more thing and he'll fall apart at the seams. You don't know Eddie Jacks. But you do. He's a user, Ron. He'll use anything or anybody if it'll put two more cents in his pocket. Up to and including his own daughter. Rita doesn't have anything he could want. Her mother does. The tavern. Oh, that big money maker. You know, you sound like you have more than a passing acquaintance with the guy. Ada's been burned too much to have anything to do with him. So I guess it's just you and me against this monster from outer space, huh? Forget I said anything. Dad. What do you want me to do? He's taking a room at the boarding house. And? If he tries to see Rita, stop him. Tell me something. Eddie Jacks didn't happen to know Jack Chandler, did he? Good morning, Mrs. Gordon. Mrs. Gordon? Yes. You got a minute? I want to catch the gardeners before they leave. Oh, do you think you'll be needing the car at all later on this afternoon? No, I'll be home all day unless there's some last-minute shopping. Well, are you sure you won't want to go on a joyride later on? I'm quite sure. What is it, Lee? You know, the radio just got through saying that it was a great day down at the beach, that there were a lot more people down there than usual. So? They say that ocean air does great things to a man. It sure does great things to your husband. I am in no mood for games today, Lee. <laughs> well, maybe that's why you're being left out, Mrs. Cord. Seems like your husband's been in the mood to play games lately, especially when he's around Mrs. Van Leiden. Let go of me. <laughs> I saw them on the beach kissing. You're lying. No, no, I'm not lying, Mrs. Cord. That's why I took her down there. And I said you're lying. <laughs> By the way, Mrs. Court, if you change your mind about that ride later on, I'll be around.
from the continuing story of Peyton Place. The only charge you have against Adrian is that her husband... There are limits even to your protection. We'll see about that. Will you have a state around this town because you love it? Or it loves you? My life is here and my sons are here. The money's here. I could cheer if you came over here to tell me that it was over between you and Stephen. But it isn't. If you care. I care.